Yep. Well, Jack Fun right here. Uh, congratulations on getting back in the win column. Uh, another pretty dominant, violent performance. So I guess what are the emotions now after coming off that victory or injury and now getting the victory? Uh, just ecstatic. Like, it, you know, I said it in the press conference to all of you that it wasn't going to be enough just to win. I needed to do it impressively. And um, I think I did that and probably a little bit more. So uh, happy with the performance, but by no means satisfied with just being here. Um, I said next time I'm in Perth, I'll be disappointed if I'm not the co-main event or main event slot. I'm going to just keep building this momentum. Not looking for any more time off, not looking for anything outside of this career other than just foot to the floor, get the right fights, put in the right camps like I did for this one and keep winning. I know obviously you weren't scheduled, originally scheduled to fight Herbert Burns, but when they brought when they brought you his name, you know, you said you, you assumed you'd be matched up with him eventually. So um, is that how you saw the fight playing, like playing out and his game plan? Obviously, we kind of knew what it was, but did, what was it like being in there for that? Uh, look, I, that's exactly how I thought the fight would go. Like, it's scripted. And my coaches as well, like, we just said the body shot's going to be there. I'll fake the leg kick, which will open up everything else. And and then when, once, once I've got the range, I can start ripping the leg kick. And that's what happened. And I thought that if I landed enough leg kicks and then I put him on the ground, there'd be a time where he'd get shown the door and, and want to leave it. And he did. But one thing, credit to Herbert. He took this fight on four weeks' notice. He made weight, which, you know, some people don't make the effort to do when they get the short notice fight. So credit to him and his team. And he's flown halfway across the world to fight me in my home country on short notice. So thank you to Herbert and his team. I know you said that's pretty much how you expected it, but is it frustrating at all when you're in there? You know, he keeps dropping to his back no matter what, or, you know, you just this is what you signed up for and you kind of knew what was coming. Yeah, fighting's fighting. Like, it, it'll come to you in different ways. Um, I think my coaches kind of slap me, not slap me around, but in between the second and third round, they I was, go... I was going to ask about that. Yeah, they, no, in between the second and third round, they said, hey, stop messing around and sort of playing coy with him when he goes to his back. Just tell him to stand up because he's just looking for a rest. Um, and then... You know, in the, at the end of the third there, right when the fight finished, when I stood up and he didn't get up, I was kind of thinking, oh, should I stay here? And then I thought, nah, coach is going to grill me if I stay here and, and just waste time. So I stood up and then he didn't want to get up anymore. And I ended up finishing the fight right there. At media day, you said there was this narrative that, you know, Herbert Burns quits in there. Do you think you made him quit, you know, because he didn't want to stand up? Or do you just think... He was um, just... Look, yeah, I thought he held himself pretty well. He took a lot of damage. I think I dropped him a couple times. There was one body shot that I hit that went as deep into someone's guts as you can get with a body shot. And, you know, he didn't drop from that and he came out for the third. So, yeah, good on him. I, I did what I had to do and he did what he had to do and he, he couldn't make it to the end of the bell. And you called out Gavin Tucker in Edmonton. Is that's just you know you did a, did almost a full camp for him already, and then you said you had ties to Edmonton. Um, he's obviously from Canada, so it just makes sense for you. Yeah, look, it, and that's not like I'm I'm hunting Gavin Tucker or anything like that. It, you know, it's just the fight was made, so I thought he would want the fight, and it's in Edmonton, with, and he's Canadian, and I have a, a really good connection with the city of Edmonton. So if, if that's the fight, that's the fight. But I kind of just caught Sean for a little bit out the back, and I don't think that's what he's got planned. Did he tell you what he has planned? No. Nah, he keeps his cards pretty close to his chest, old Sean, but we'll hopefully get an answer soon. All right, Jackie boy. Um, oh, my man. <laughs> now, uh, when you came into the UFC, of course, called One Trick Pony because they thought you were a wrestler. You've now spent some time breaking some legs. Was there a bit of you that wanted to play the jiu-jitsu game at all to sort of show your skills in that? No, nah, fuck no. <laughs> no, he's a jiu-jitsu world champion. I wanted to blast his legs and rip the body and I actually wanted to come over the top with the right hand a bit more I think I landed one over the top with the right hand and I might have dropped him or maybe hit him hard enough that he kind of took a seat so you know that's something to work on just letting that right hand come over the top off the body shot and hopefully find the chin a little bit more but as far as jiu-jitsu goes like I'm confident in my jiu-jitsu chops like I, I can roll with some of the best guys in the world and hold my own. It's more just about what kind of fighter do I want to be? What, what, what do I want to be remembered for? When I look back at my highlights, what do I want to see? And I do a fair bit of watching my own highlights. So <laughs> I want to see vicious kicks and, and really nice boxing. And uh, how do you rate that performance or the, what we saw of Jack Jenkins out there out of 10? Uh, B plus. B plus. If I'm going to give it a grade, I know you asked for 10, but I don't really like you, so... 
I'm just joking. Nah, but B plus. Look, I think I still got levels to come. I think uh, if I, you'll know when you see an A plus because it, it'll be flawless. I still made some mistakes there. There's still plenty to work on, but that that was a really solid performance, and I think it puts me in good stead moving forward. And uh, and finally, Perth crowd. Of course, you made your debut, Perth crowd. Uh, what was the difference this time around? Look, uh, I just I'm more comfortable here. Like I know it it sounds silly, but I'm I'm more comfortable doing this stuff with you guys. I'm more comfortable with the walkout. I'm more comfortable with the procedure, and it it just makes it easier to take it in your stride. And and when you feel like part of the big show rather than accessory to the big show, um, that that's probably a big change that's happened over the last since last you saw me in Perth. And also, just finally, what's the chances of you ever wearing a shirt? post-fight press conference. <laughs> There's not much chance of me wearing a shirt for the next day or two, I reckon. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Jack, did you? Um, what did it mean to you to silence at the Addis tonight? Not, not just with a win, but with a, a completely dominant shutout tonight as well. Yeah, it meant everything to me. And I think, like, on the reverse end of silencing the doubters, m- more so my team, like my teammates, Dylan, Joey, and Al in particular, and Jacob, and then my coaches, Benny, Simon, Andy, and Raja, more so rather than silence and the doubters, but just showing that the work they've done and making all the sacrifice that they do for me worth it by just doing my part of the job. Because in the, in the last 11 months, they've done their job flawlessly. They kept me on track. They've done all the extra work. They've done all the game planning and everything. So for me, it's all on me when I get in there. So I'm more proud of myself that I held up to them and sort of showed them in the mirror a reflection of their work in the cage rather than, you know, silencing any da- doubters or haters. Absolutely. Um, one more for me. Obviously, you had the elbow injury last year. How was that tonight at the fight? Did you, did you feel it all? Or? Didn't feel a thing. Nice. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you, mate. Just one for me, Jack. Um, so you mentioned before the fight that you would be unhappy with, um, with a fight that wasn't adding any momentum to you in your career. You rated it a B plus. Would you say that you were happy in that regard, that you added a bit of momentum? Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's a momentum-bringing fight. You, I, like, I think you're going to see that on the social media streams and Mitchell t- hopefully talk it up on his show and hopefully all you guys give me a bit of a pump up in your post-fight write-ups and... Yeah, it'll gain a little bit of momentum for me and it's just about steps forward in this game. you just got to keep your head down and, and keep moving forward. And you mentioned your, your coach and your corner was grilling you for just not letting him stand up when he was going to his back. What was initially going through your head when you were thinking about, well, do I try and go to the ground and do I try and pepper him with strikes from the top? What was going through your head? I don't know, really. Like, Probably a good question. I probably need to think about that. I, <laughs> I don't know. I was just kind of standing there thinking that I could go into his guard because I was pretty confident in my jiu-jitsu and I felt like if anything he was probably just going to rest there because when I was on top for a point of time he was kind of just resting like he wasn't moving his hips wildly trying to cut angles and every time he did I shut it down so uh, I was thinking about going down there and sort of solidifying rounds but then in the back of your head it's like winning's not enough you've got to be impressive so it was stand him up and show what you can do now you expected the fight to go like that did you expect it to end in the fashion that it did with that TKO yeah, pretty much. I thought that yeah. the leg or the body would take enough damage and there'd be a point where he just doesn't want to get up. And the final question for me, how do you condition your shins? Because you've broken several legs now. Don't know if you're doing that, but you mentioned... Yeah, look, I think it's partially genetic. Um, I've done some testing. I've got top 1% of the population of the planet of bone density. So i just got really dense bones and I can rip leg kicks. Oh, yeah. Thanks, mate. Thanks, bro. Jack, just here to your right. Down below. Hey, mate. Um, obviously, fighting so early in the morning, did, did you find it hard to adapt or, you know, did you have any problems sleeping last night? No, I slept 10 hours like a log <laughs> last night. It was, it was awesome. Um, you know, sometimes you have trouble sleeping fight week anyway, cutting weight and that sort of thing. But I said to my coaches when we got up this morning, I said, oh, I'm on. I said, I slept like a rock. I feel fresh. Mentally, I'm on. And, you know, it was just... I, I don't think I could have had a better preparation for this fight. Like, I, I put so much volume through my body for training and it just absorbed it all. Um, and it, it was just a great all-around, a great camp, a great lead-up week and, and a great fight. And how about the crowd as well? It was absolutely electric considering it was 7.30 in the morning. How much did that spur you on? Yeah, yeah. I saw some pundits from the US sort of saying, oh, what's going on with these fight times? The Manchester card was crazy. And then there's going to be no one there for the prelims for the Aussie card. And I'm like, this guy doesn't know anything about the Aussie crowd here. It's, it's going to be packed out there. And it was. I loved every second of that walkout. And you obviously copped a bit of a groin shot there. Is everything okay? Yeah, there everything's all good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all good. Thanks, mate. <laughs>
Thanks for your time, guys. Have a good day.